how to fault find and test an immersion heater the professional way. Always practice safe isolation when possible. Lock the MCB off at the fuse board. And always remember to use a voltage indicating device. Here I'm using a multimeter, an electrical screwdriver, and an immersion spanner for an invented cylinder. When working on invented cylinders, that's the type you need. On vented cylinders, the immersion is a lot thinner. This type, you can put a screwdriver through or a spanner and twist it. Unvented immersion spanner. Another type is the immersion spanner. This type it's quite common, give it a tap, undo the immersion. My preferred type is the hexagon immersion spanner. Reason being, you put a bar through, bar through the immersion, put two extension pieces on and you can twist it round, twist it round. So you get twice the power on it and at both sides. All immersions now have an energy cutout, cutout safety device and there's one here for the heating system. That shuts off supply to the motorised valve and the boiler and the one to the immersion shuts off the supply to the elements. Always try pressing these in as they may have been activated when systems overheated. Here I'm doing a basic check to see if there's power supply. Yes it's lit. I'm turning the thermostat on and now checking this power supply going to the element. Here I've got my multimeter set to AC. One probe on the earth and the other one on the element reading 240 volts. Here I'm going to check resistance on the element. I've set it to ohms reading, which is the horseshoe on my multimeter, 200 ohms. I'm looking for 13 to 20 ohms on the element. I've isolated it correctly. I pulled the cables off and I'm going to check the resistance between the live and neutral on the element. Perfect reading. The element is working. Testing the immersion. Signs for your multimeter that are useful. AC, alternating current, which is 240 volts AC. That's the wavy line. It can be anything from 190 to 250. And direct current, which is a constant figure. In the heating industry, it can be anything from 5 to 24 volts. However, you can get up to 350 volts DC. Now, let's go back to the test I did. Here's the immersion. You have... Two safety devices. The life supply comes in and it's clamped just here. Life supply comes in, goes to the immersion, passes the immersion on call or demand, and also goes through the energy cutout, which is here, and then goes to the immersion element. To test power supply, I went from the earth to the immersion on my multimeter, and I checked 240 volts. AC. Then what I did is I changed my multimeter to ohms, which is the horseshoe, and I went from one side of the element to the other. And really, it needs to be between 15 and 20 ohms. So between the live and the neutral, 15 to 20 ohms. And that will tell you if the element is working. Isolation valve. Line strainer. Pressure reducing valve. 
balance supply to cold. Cold feed, cold feed. Pressure release valve. And then behind that, you've got the temperature release valve, which is a poppet valve that goes inside the cylinder. 95 degrees, it opens up. Cold feed comes down. They have a tundish dish, D1 and D2. D2 is always copper. Here we have the expansion vessel and the flexible. Comes all the way down. When installing an immersion, fit a fibre washer and put jointing compound on both sides of the fibre washer. Do not put jointing compound on the thread. Here we have a meter install. There's a hole in the meter. This should be sealed so gas cannot escape into the cavity of the dwelling. Here we have the sleeve that should be fitted. We have the on off label for homeowners and emergency contact number, which is correct.